I'm going to take you through a, re re a bit of a reverb going on there. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, go for a recap of what I presented last year. Uh, it's the first time I was at EWTS, so thanks to the guys for inviting me back. Um, I want to kind of continue the story of uh, how we're trying to innovate and kind of the, the path forward. There's always, always a path ahead of you, of course. Um, bring up the lessons learned as well from last, from last year, previous years as well, because it all adds up. And kind of talk about how we've kind of come up with uh, innovation packages to help us kind of in incubate these visualisation uh, solutions into real projects. Um, then I kind of go on to the, the benefits. So always an interesting one to talk about, but uh, you see my, my take on that. Um, and then how we share the knowledge. Everything we do, we always need to keep learning, keep spreading uh, that knowledge. Uh, and we have this is a way that Bechtel would um, share that knowledge. So we'll go into that as well. And finally, the use cases. Um, take you from where we started off with our use cases through to what we have now and how we feel that's kind of spurring uh, additional uh, use cases to be explored. Okay, so quick introduction on myself. Um, so I've been doing AR uh, for quite a few years now. Um, I think as a background and probably a highlight of what we've done in the past, it helps us think forward. Uh, we, we looked at how we could use AR technology from uh, GPS tracking solutions for hazard identification through to uh, looking at clash detection uh, on railway uh, systems uh, and then kind of moved up into uh, progress tracking. Uh, and that particular use case, which was uh, about nine months in the making, uh, it kind of helped guide us as to how we can innovate in the future through co-innovation. Um, that, so that project was heavily focused on working with an existing supplier uh, for 4D um, software, so that's where you're tracking time against a 3D model. Uh, we worked with Matayo, an AR tra tracking solution, to turn that into an application we take onto site with an iPad. Um, that was purely just to visualise uh, model data. Um, what we quickly found out was we could round trip the data back and we thought, okay, well now we've found a use case that we didn't anticipate at the time when we were implementing, when we were testing the technology, but now it's proven additional benefits. Um, long story short on that one, uh, we, we uh, closed up on that particular project, shared the knowledge, and, and that's now transformed into an application for a company called Synchro 4D who have developed it into a, a HoloLens application. So for us, innovation uh, can benefit us today uh, in kind of small steps, but ultimately we want to be able to provide the industry with um, or contribute to the industry in kind of new ways of thinking of doing business and doing, doing work in construction. So that's the kind of an interaction of my background and how, how we've, why I've got this job really today. Okay, so the 27 recap. Uh, this information should still be available on EWTS website, so if you haven't been there before, uh, well, you must have, but uh, yeah, please do have a look at it. Um, talked a lot about the challenges, you know, big dusty uh, construction sites, whether it's infrastructure, oil and gas, mining and metals. Um, the challenges we've all heard in the last few days, uh, so I won't get delve into that. The wearable challenge um, on the right, top, top right, that picture there was something we've done with Matayo. Uh, and we had a seamless augmented reality experience with a laptop and a web camera. But it, it, for us, that was a challenge. We wanted to give out, but we wanted to aim to a future where, regardless of headset, we could walk around and see that contextual information based on wherever I was on that particular piece of construction site. Um, data on demand. Uh, background is also a virtual project uh, delivery. Data integration, so understanding what happens with data at the start of a job, at, feas at a feasibility stage how it gets them rich with data all the way through to handover. So for us, for AR, it wasn't just about the visualisation piece, it was about how do you make use of all that data that's been constantly being built up uh, and passed down the chain through to the, through to the client. And it kind of ended with uh, the pet potential, you know, lots and lots of potential uh, in construction, you know, people have said to already today that, um, you know, we're one of the least digitised uh, industries out there, but there's just so much potential out there, which is why everyone's still trying to really kind of push forward on it. Um, so 2017, where we left off was, okay, well, we've got these uh, pilots, we have our future fund group, which, work, which there's plenty of presentations on that, but essentially we can help innovate or let, uh, allow our groups to innovate, our project teams to innovate with this technology in kind of little small proof of concepts. But we said, how can we ramp that up? How can we you know, accelerate the learning? 
uh, keep contributing to the industry, keep moving forwards, carry on with the learning, regardless of it's a fail or, or, or a success, just keep moving on. So, um, just move ahead. So, we ca came up with a, a vision to say, okay, right, based on what we've learned, how can we uh, take those lessons learned, package them up in a way that uh, we can get started a lot quicker with these pilots? Um, we've, we've built up a lot, a lot of knowledge with these various companies. How can we, 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 we've got a good foundation as to you know, where to start, and more importantly, allow our project teams anywhere around the globe to say, I need to start, and we should be able to point them in the right direction by this stage. So we took those uh, lessons and came up with a, a, an initiative called Access XR. So the main, uh, there's two main features of Access XR, which is basically, as it's, uh, it's describing, accessing extended reality solutions. Um, two areas uh, it's meant to tackle, so, sorry, two areas. There's two, two issues. Uh, there's a higher prob probability of failure um, on one side, on one path that's well trodden, unfortunately, um, with pilots just uh, taking place um, in isolation. And then there's the route which is the higher probability of success based on all these learnings. So we kind of said, okay, well, that, we know that kind of doesn't work the way we'd like it to. Maybe this is a way forward. Excuse me. Okay, so um, the, the path to failure, um, and don't get me wrong, this is, you know, everyone has to go through this. Uh, it's, uh, you learn so much, I hate using the word failure, because I wouldn't be in this position now, uh, and our company wouldn't be in this position with testing this technology, we didn't have these failures to learn from. But typically, uh, if you've not started uh, an innovation program around AR, uh, you're gonna come across these issues. Uh, number one, quite obviously, where to start. You know, that, that's just a small selection next door, uh, especially when you get into the software side. Um, there's just so many choices out there. Where do you start? The, the vendors are constantly improving, of course. Uh, lots of, kind of starter use cases to begin with. Um, and they're, you know, through collaboration, they're starting to get more refined use cases. But it's still a massive choice out there. Um, and of course, with any industry, you're gonna get lots of new players coming on board with a slightly different variation. Um, Okay, so an issue with that, which is a good, good problem, is the fact that uh, they're all very, very similar. So we say, well, okay, well, where do you start? Uh, pick one, see how it goes, learn, succeed, or, or, or you know, whichever path it, it takes you down. But there's still that choice to be made. And then, of course, there's the integration. Once you've got past the, okay, well, I've got a good idea to use this t technology. Um, and then you kind of hit a roadblock with the integration side. Now, uh, again, the vendors do very, very well in... Um, Helping you, helping understand uh, what your back-end systems look like, but it, it's it's a lot of investigative work you've got to do because not every vendor is going to be up to the kind of quality you're going to need um, in some cases. Uh, so there's the integration of how how these solutions and the back-end especially links with your uh, uh, enterprise solutions. Um, I've got in practical solutions, they're mainly kind of aimed at the hardware side. Um, some of the software, so hardware, quite obviously, not every device is fit for purpose, depending on the task. So for construction, obviously, lots of different types of craft activities taking place, whether it's climbing towers, going into dr trenches, uh, going into heavy equipment. Uh, not all these headsets would make, make sense initially. So you're going to have to kind of dive in a bit with those devices. Um, but on the software side, uh, you know, on, the, the on the track for AR, the technology, so the, the tracking, uh, solutions, whether it's GPS, whether it's QR codes, whether it's featureless tracking, um, you, you know, you, you've really got to know, well, you need to rely on the vendors, for, of course, but uh, there are a lot of considerations, in it, especially in a construction site, you know, where you're not going to be able to put up markers, you're not going to be able to use GPS, you know, featureless marking might actually be the, the best way forward there, for example, but, but it's understanding where, where to start with that. Um, and a large investment, you know, depending on the size of the company, for, even for, for Bechtel, you know, when we started, um, there were large investments uh, to get, in, get, get engaged with this. Um, and it's probably still going to be the case now in some cases, but, uh, you know, you, everyone wants to advance this technology within their own businesses. But again, it's kind of, when you compare some vendors to others, there's big price differences. So again, where do you start with that? From, from a data perspective, um, I say I'm, I, I work in, I've worked in virtual product delivery and data integration. Uh, yeah, 
not all your data is sitting in a nice database. It's sitting in PDFs, sitting in Excel sheets, sitting in Word documents. You know, that is the biggest pain point for the vendors, <laughs> let alone uh, yourselves. Uh, so how to deal with that data? How, do we, how can they quickly get you to a proof of concept based on the way your data is structured? Uh, and often that's from what we found. It's, you know, there's a lot of effort that's needed to understand what that looks like. And of course, you add all those up. Uh, you don't come to them, get seven, but you come to number seven. Um, if you've gone down that path, as, as I said, we have, uh, you end up with a limit, very limited scope, uh, and the kind of chance of success of that scope is, is minimal. Because um, you end up having to you get so restricted with the issues. Uh, you, you, you kind of end up having to, to make compromises. So I've mentioned there, dummy data. Um, you haven't got the right team involved, you know, because of some questions that haven't been answered. Or, you know, you're not quite sure that you've got 100% that you've started off with the right vendor or the right piece of hardware. Uh, or the investments, kind of, you haven't invested enough to kind of get to that stage. So those are the kind of problems we, we typically face. Well, okay, well, how do, how do we uh, get around that? Okay, so Access XR, um, kind of took, took those seven items and said, okay, well, how can we do that better? So uh, focus, um, you know, part of my job is to, and, and job of my colleagues, is to go out and look at what's happening in the industry, look at uh, companies like the, the, the shipbuilding, uh, your, your, your use case we just saw just before, look at what's happening in the automotive industry. Uh, in fact, a lot of what we've done on the, the AR tracking side has been born out of our learnings from the automotive industry. Um, you know, so we kind of need to keep focusing on what those what solutions starting to arise, where they're coming from, and kind of essentially kind of desktop research or interviews or visiting these people, just kind of understand where the best solutions are. So we can build up a picture of, okay, well, we've got some experience now of what we think we want to do as technology. Where should we be going for a solution that's now coming, coming to us from the project? Um, integration. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't deal with one data set, as I said before, we all typically deal with multiple formats. So we're always looking for a, a solution that you know, is, is agnostic. You have to have an agnostic solution. Um, you won't always get it, but you have to get as close as damn it to it. Um, excuse me. Uh, because you want to future-proof uh, what, what your activities. Um, come, to, come to the vetted, vetted vendors. Uh, for us, it's quite simple. That's just putting them through our... Uh, demand management uh, process. Um, all of us will have particular procedures which we would typically go through on procurement sides of things. Uh, you know, it's always difficult because we're not trying to deploy solutions. This is all about helping people innovate ideas. Um, you know, we, we, there's still a lead time to get through that procurement process. So we kind of try to start early with vendors we find that have a, a unique selling point to an area that we're keen to explore. Okay, and if it goes hand-to-hand -hand with InfoSec and the security side, um, security guys have got a lot of press this week. I won't add to that. They, they, can, <laughs> uh, they should have a conference on, on this technology um, because I think that they've got a lot to share. Uh, and so what we do is we work very closely with our teams. It doesn't always go smoothly, never will, but uh, the plus side for both of us is that we're both learning how we need to adapt and, of course, feed that back to the vendors we're working with. So we try and get the vendors into that process quite early as well. Uh, fit for use, quite simply, you know, IP rating there. Uh, we see lots of devices come and go. Um, we won't actually go onto a project with any kind of AR solutions unless we know they're fit for purpose, unless we know we can drop them from a meter from, uh, you know, onto concrete. We know we can use them in some kind of um, sort of rain environment, moisture environment. Got to be fit for purpose. Uh, so it does limit the field. Uh, let's say some of you've probably seen some of the devices that are out already. Um, but yeah, we're, we're constantly looking at solutions that, even from a simple aspect, you know, it could be one of the most advanced pieces of hardware. It could actually be one of the simplest pieces of hardware, even all the way down to a Google Cardboard device. Again, it depends on the use case, but it's got to be fit for purpose. A waterproof Google Cardboard, I might add. But, uh, um, for me, biggest one, again, the consideration is ETL. It's got to be compatible with ETL systems. So extract, transform, and load. Um, you find it's commonly used, these tools commonly used in uh, geos uh, geographics industry. Uh, and that's essentially uh, the ability to consume any kind of data format, repurpose it uh, on, a, on a canvas. So if you're familiar with um, Visio and the ID, you can just drag and drop uh, flowcharts together. Well, these ETL tools allow you to do the same drag and drop the data that you're exposing through your CAD, through your Excel, through your database, and then allow you to 
port it into whatever application you're thinking of using. So if we're thinking of using a pair of smart glasses and it needs some kind of card-based system, which is based on HTML technology, we know that we, with an ETL tool, we know that we should be able to consume that data and at least feed it into that vendor solution because we've got ETL that's sitting in the middle. Uh, and ETL is very important for us because not only does it allow you to quickly transfer data, convert data, it talks about model decimation, um, there are LOD tools, level of detail tools, will take a large BIM model, take it into a smaller uh, version to be viewed on a smart glass or viewed on a whole lens, so great level of detail. Uh, but, but for us, when we're looking at these solutions and we're innovating around this, we want to make sure that we can future-proof future -proof our, our innovations. And, and, we, and the thinking there is that if we can create templates or schemas around how we would have to take that PDF, how we would have to take that part of the BIM model, that part of the Excel sheet, that part of the uh, database, craft it into a solution that says, okay, for these steps, I need this part of the, the model to view, I need this part of data from that database, and I need this information from a, a spreadsheet. We're creating a, creating a schemas, and part of the, what we, we do internally is not only just create those schemas, but kind of work out how can we optimize that schema. So you, for example, you, uh, for those you understand um, concepts behind BIM models, thousands and thousands of line items in there you could have. You don't need everything in, a BIM, in, a, in an AR model, but you might need certain aspects for that particular use. So it's for the smart glasses, if you need a HoloLens, you might want a bit more data coming through the pipeline, but you might be able to dispense with others. So part of what we do is kind of understand what data should we be funneling through to that vendor solution. Um, so this kind of, the, the, we've got to mention, mention it, a one-stop shop. So we're kind of an internal one-stop one shop. And we say, okay, well, look, you know, we'll help point you in the right direction for your use case. So someone from our uh, Brisbane office or someone in our Chile office or anyone in the UK, wherever they are on project, they can call us up and say, okay, well, I've got an idea for an AR solution. Where can I get started? And we will take them through this and say, well, okay, well, we think your, your optimum solution might look like this and these are the considerations you need to make. Okay, so what's, what that's resulted in, I say, the learnings from all the vendors. Um, so, so first of all, I must say that there's a list of vendors there. Some we're, we've worked with in the past, some we're still working with, uh, some we're about to work with. Uh, but for us, we're always looking for vendors that have got unique selling points against the competition because you know, we're, we're part of an innovation group. Um, we, we obviously want to get solutions to be deployed on site. That's not our responsibility. It's up to the project managers, the, business, the, the project owners, to make that decision once they've tested something. But for us, we're kind of keep wanting to push the boundaries and keep looking for those future solutions. So I'm happy to say we've learned a lot from the, the, the companies that are listed there. Some, as I say, some of them we're still working with. Um, but they're helping us with these innovation packages. So kind of a sort of nod to those guys that are helping us and girls. Uh, so between them, they've, they've enabled us to come up with these uh, various packages. So we kind of bucketed them in uh, six areas. So remote expert, spoke a lot about, lots about that in the last couple of days. Immersive uh, sort of voice guided inspections, uh, so workflow instructions, of course. Um, immersive training, so semi-immersive uh, training solutions, so, so something like lockout, tagout, where you've got some physical equipment and you want to be able to go through processes with digital overlay instructions. Um, you know, mobile and fixed VR, it's, you know, we have some of the, the high-end solutions out there, but there's a lot of call for simple solutions as well. So we, people come to us with those kind of requests, we've got solutions around that. Um, got IoT and holographic calls, so IoT in particular, you know, we, we, you know, we're starting to move into that space, there's still a lot of work to be done on vendor side and kind of like the client side, of course. Uh, but again, we look for solutions, so I'm going to highlight AR Visio in particular here. Um, not have any premise, but there's just one example of a company that says, okay, well, we can give you large models in a HoloLens, streams locally, so you kind of get over the, 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 the LOD side of things, but also we can integrate with Apache NiFi uh, IoT. So again, we're, kind of, we're not in that space just yet with the AR and VR, but we know once we get to that stage when the question's asked, right, I see my plant, I now want that IoT data coming through, I'm using these legacy systems, where do we start? we got a solution almost to hand to say, right, well, that's where we experiment. Uh, and as I say, with all these companies mentioned there, they've all got a unique selling point that helped us kind of uh, you know, focus in on uh, uh, something that could kind of help our project teams. So I'm just moving ahead quickly. Um, another thing we do from there, we kind of test assumptions. So uh, what we try to do is quickly iterate a design uh, through a, a kind of a very short workshop, uh, probably about one or two hours. Someone comes to us with an idea. 
Um, we ask them to list their assumptions of what they think this, this technology is going to do for them. Uh, we help rank them based on if, well, if there's some kind of innovation or uh, you know, if there's a reason to be using this technology in the first place. And you know, um, I'll mention Interwear is another company that helps us rapidly create an application based on that feedback so someone can go and test it straight away uh, and then carry on the learning process. Um, it's amazing what you'll come up with in just a couple of hours with a tool that allows you to cr create an application and test it on a headset, whether it's a realware or Vuzix or whatever. Um, very, uh, very, very, very helpful. Um, so I'm just realise the time. Uh, I'm going to make sure I finish this because I didn't finish it last year. Uh, right, benefits. This, uh, this is an easy one for me. So it's usually time and cost, uh, but for me, the, the absolute be best benefit in, in this position is when someone says. Where do you think you're taking that headset? I want it back. Or where are you taking that piece of software? I need this. Because then if that person's been testing it for a week or two or even six months and they don't want to hand it back, that's obviously improved their task. Um, it's going to be down to them to uh, prove it to their, their, their management. But typically, you know, people are trusted. To, you know, you've employed these experts to do their job. If these experts are saying, I need this to carry on doing my job and improve my job, that's the benefit. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Uh, use cases, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I will take you to one to uh, London City Airport. I'm going to go straight into it. This is using the Interwear platform uh, and the Realware uh, headset, London City Airport, 1100 piles, and a daily inspection report that's gone from. It's not, doesn't seem to be playing. Yeah. Ah. So, we're on barge one, um, working on P712. Current state it is, we, we scraped down to 2.4 metres. The toolbox talk this morning that was conducted uh, was on the weather. As you can see, it's very hot, so the guys are taking regular it's breaks. Plane just about to take We're off. still maintaining the 27 metre offset from the taxiway centre line. You can see the boys in the water there. Uh, they've moved back a whip just because of um, slight flotation, so we know we're still within that. Um, the runway 27 is in use at the moment, so that we're still using a turning circle, so the guys are just... So when people breaks. say, OK, uh, yeah, I could use a mobile phone to do that daily inspection, why do I need headsets? Construction, very noisy, um, straight away, fit for purpose. You know, you know, any other device we've tried, uh, the, the wisp has failed. You know, the guy's voice has been cut off. Um, you know, that is something that can be used as a daily report and fed back to the, the client. So I'll just have to cut that short. Uh, plenty of other examples. This is uh, most likely to be made available through Brain Exchange's website. Uh, so just intros into some of the areas we've actually been testing or, uh, or in, in, in action right now. Sorry, let me just quickly advance. Uh, yeah, communication. Um, so you know, we've got various business lines, aviation, oil and gas, infrastructure. The use cases on the previous page that are you know, pretty much transferable, uh, need to be tweaked, which is why you need tools that allow you to quickly iterate on an existing template that you created. Um, and, and, you know, we, we share this through uh, Yammer. We have a, a, a blog, um, externally facing and internally facing blog, that's uh, kind of communicate, communicating how we're doing this. Uh, we do lots of STEM events, um, lots of client demonstrations, uh, and we also have our own graphic novel on the future of technology and construction. So, you know, we're actively trying to communicate, you know, where you know, the benefits, not so much the benefits, but, you know, where the innovation is happening around the globe on this and how you could kind of get involved. So, um, yeah, I've, I've actually finished on time, which I didn't do last year. Um, th that's my presentation. Uh, it was a, a deep dive, so there's, there's information on uh, last year's presentation. If there's anything in there that resonates with you, you need to talk about, come and see me afterwards, uh, especially on the data side. Uh, so it's been a bugbear of, my part, a bugbear of mine in the past, but I think we've, we've kind of found some solutions to help you along that. But that's it. Thank you.